When a user reads about malware, they usually read about a virus. And there's a specific reason for reading about viruses and, and the reason media usually reports things that are just generally malware as a virus. Because virus sounds nasty, and actually some of it is pretty darn nasty. Typically speaking, the, the industry calls self-replicating malware a virus, certain types of self-replicating malware virus. And viruses have a couple of different characteristics. They mutate. Viruses typically change their form. They change their pattern. They change the code. They change their footprint to try to prevent detection and removal. So although there are great virus scanners and great virus protectors out there, if the virus is constantly changing and adapting and trying to hide from them, it becomes a cat and mouse game where nobody really wins. Viruses sometimes get the leg up. Malware scanners sometimes get the leg up. Viruses also typically hide themselves in files, um, in blank spots in the hard drive or sectors or in metadata, sometimes even in hardware. There, there's been instances where viruses hide, let's say, in an EEPROM, in, an, uh, in a programmable ROM chip, or in a video card, because video cards have tons of memory, some of which is non-volatile and persists through reboots. Those are great things. Viruses typically are, are a little more insidious because they can hide themselves. They can go dormant for a while. They can wake up after a while. They can wake up on control, or they could just wake up after a random amount of time. Makes them even harder to eradicate once they actually take hold. And the most typical category for virus is destructive. It's usually considered destructive. A virus is almost always destructive. Destructive self-replicating software is almost always a virus. Remember that Trojans are often not destructive. They're always often intrusive. They often give us a, a leg up on our compromise, but they often do not destroy a system. Does that mean a virus and a Trojan are completely different? No, they're both forms of malware, and you can use a Trojan as a virus very easily by having a destructive payload instead of a, a, a re-entry payload or instead of a monitoring payload. So viruses are usually a little bit more crafty in that they are specifically designed to install, self-replicate, and destroy things. How do you use a virus in, in your ethical hack? Well, typically what you do is you use a virus construction kit to actually form up a brand new virus based on either a, a compromise or vulnerability that you've footprinted in the target. So for example, if the target environment uses Adobe Reader on every single client and you find a vulnerability in Adobe Reader that can be attacked with some code, you may either download some sample code or craft up your own code to attack Adobe Reader and then package it up with a virus construction kit. Usually the reason you're using a virus construction kit is for the self-replication and for the hiding aspects of things, not for the actual attack code or destruction code itself. And then because it's self-replicating, just like if you think about kind of a, a real-world virus like the plague, you just throw it out there into the world on enough people where it gets infected the first time and then you watch it go. It self-replicates, it self-infects, it spreads, it spreads, it spreads, and it's almost impossible to eradicate. That's why this warning is here specifically on this page, even though I've got a couple of warnings throughout this video. Viruses are exceptionally hard to control. Once you've crafted one and let it loose, you could possibly get into a situation where you can't control it, where you can't stop it from infecting. So be exceptionally careful on this. There have been some real-world documented cases where virus developers or antivirus developers were working on systems like this or working on code like this and literally got the, the, the code got out of control or got accidentally connected to the wrong network or got accidentally installed somewhere and started infecting the world. And these folks certainly didn't mean any harm, but they wound up causing a lot of damage and destruction out there. So be really, really, really careful about what you do with a virus. Much more malicious, I think, than a Trojan or a backdoor, and much harder to control.